Good health to you. I'm looking for the workshop of Master Engraver. It's in the monastery courtyard. You'll find him there. Take care now. Father, I need your help urgently. You? I recognize you. You're the Scarlet's blacksmith, son. Yes, that I am. I'm sorry, what did you want? It may sound strange, but I need you to go back to St. James. The locals need their spiritual shepherd. No, no, certainly not, my boy. That's one place I shan't be going back to. Why? It is your parish, after all. A parish that's little but a ruin these days. And besides, God forgive me, but I'm afraid. All kinds of ruffians are on the rampage around Skelets. It isn't completely safe, but most of them are gone. As my father used to say, why take the risk? How did you manage to get out of Skelets? I didn't. I wasn't there during the raid. I was here at Sassau for confession. And why aren't you with our folks at Ratai? What if Sir Radzig has need of you? Look, here I'm an honoured guest and well cared for. In Ratai there's hardly room enough for the refugees already there. And what's more, the parish priest doesn't like me. Which happens to be mutual. The last thing I want to be doing is haggling with him over where I can sleep or... How many slices of bread I'm allowed to eat? He certainly isn't known for being generous. Don't you feel any shame? Think of all those Christians who faced death and never betrayed their faith. That's something else entirely. No, it's not. They weren't afraid to face death, and you're squirming at the thought of some slight danger. Haven't you seen how they ransacked the place? Does that seem slight to you? Well, not to me. The Cumans are gone, but the townsfolk won't come back. And why should they, when the man who ought to set an example, the one they look up to, is shitting himself? I am ashamed. More than you can imagine, but not quite enough to get myself killed for it. I'm a man of the cloth, not a man at arms. So I shall politely decline your offer. Do tell me, Father, why don't you like the Ratai priest exactly? Have you never met him? Now, there's a man without any fellow feeling or morals. When he sits in judgment, he's needlessly cruel. Yet when he's censored, he whines and complains. He thinks only of himself and his own desires. You're right. He really is like that. But how can you criticise him when you're turning your back on your calling out of fear? That's not the same thing at all. Isn't it? Maybe not to you or him, but the people won't see it that way. You've both failed your flocks. You can't possibly mean that. I'm nothing like that, ignoramus. It comes down to the same thing in the end. Having a scoundrel for a priest or having nobody at all. You have a calling, so follow it. I don't know who you think you are to sit in judgment on me, but I've no desire to get killed. When Sir Ratzig returns to Skelets, that's when I shall too, and not a day before. As you wish. What if they increased your income? Would that convince you? My boy, my boy. I get tithes from the parishioners, and 
Since my flock amounts to a flock of ravens these days, it won't come too much. I know. That's why I've arranged a small collection for you. So you'll have something to live on before the parishioners return. So that's what you're about. And how much have you put together? Satisfied? Come now. Just a little more and we have a deal. Well and good then. Well and good. That's most satisfactory. And where will I live? My house in Skelets must surely be in ruins. You can live right there at St. James. I'm sure the locals will be grateful enough to give you a roof over your head. Well, it's true they've treated me kindly and I do owe them. Very well. I will go back. Thank you. The people from St. James will never forget this. Father, when do you plan to return to St. James? I beg your pardon. Why do you ask, my boy? Your housekeeper, Agnes, is in Ratai and doesn't want to work for anyone else. She's waiting for your return. So she survived. Thank the Lord. I prayed for her and all who suffered, but I'm not going back. Tell her I appreciate her concern, but to look out for herself now. Good luck to you. I've got a bit of coin today. What better way to use it than a game of dice? St. George, guide my hand. Oh, come on, it's time I had a throw. Not afraid of anything, eh? We'll see. This will be the one. Hmm. Here, enjoy it. That's all. Oh, come on, it's time I had a throw. <laughs> That'll do me.
owe me one. Finished. Ale for me. Oh, come on, it's time I had a throw. Here, just as you ordered. Hmm. Hmm. That's all. You're off to a good start. The best of hell. This will be the one. That's it. No luck tonight. Use your head, man. You'll lose everything. Your turn. <laughs> Holy mother of God, why do you punish me? One beer. Jesus Christ, your clothes! Were you assaulted? Damn bandits. May they burn in hell. Goodbye. Hey! God be with you. Are there any problems around here I might be able to help with? Well, depends what you're willing to do. You're from Skellitz, ain't you? There, you must know Fritz and Matthew, then. Them fellows need to learn some manners. They've been making mischief and folk are getting fed up with them. And it occurs to me, of course it's your own Skellitz folk need the most help. There's some of them at the monastery. I talked to Johanka a few times. She's working her fingers to the bone taking care of the injured ones there. I'm sure she'd welcome some good Samaritan who'd lighten her load. And there's another thing. There was one troublemaker around here not long ago. We dealt with him. He was selling some relics he claimed were miraculous. But it was nothing but worthless trinkets. The villagers sent the bloody swindler packing so fast you couldn't see his heels for dust. All the way to Ledechko, I believe. I reckon he won't last long there either. That's all I can think of. Take care now. I'll bring it right away. You can't just walk around in the dark. You have to have a light. A lot. My respects to you. Is there anything interesting going on here? It's so peaceful. 
It worries me. God be with you. Hey, wait. Hey, hey, what are you playing at here? My breath is short, my feet are sore, I buy a horse, but I am poor. The sun may burn, the sun may shine, but you will not wither, darling mine. Now, for the last time. The sun, he hides behind a cloud, his heat goes cold and his fire goes loud. He drowned the fish and broke its neck, threw it down upon the deck. Fry your fish, the fish head's best, fishy thighs and fishy breast. A good day to you. What do you need? They say you're the best blacksmith in the whole region. That metal you've tempered never breaks. Ah, nothing but old wives' tales. Of course, some of my pieces have broken, but only ever here, at the smithy. No one's ever returned anything for you to rework, though, have they? Not that I recall, but I can't remember everything. Father was a blacksmith all my life. He always stoked up the furnace till it roared gently, and you could smell the heated iron. Then he plunged it into the water, and that was that. Fine words, and no mistake. I do it a little differently. I heat until the metal is two, three shades short of bright yellow. I ease up on the bellows, and after a Lord's Prayer and a Hail Mary, off it goes into the water. It's, um... 
It's strange to think that I'll never help him out with it again. Our forge will stay burned out forever, unless I go back to the trade myself. It would be a shame not to, lad. Working iron is a worthwhile thing. Godly. It makes life easier for folk. And, let's be honest, you can make a decent living doing it. Thank you. It was good to remember how my life used to be. Maybe you'll have the good fortune to return to your trade. I'd like to ask you about the tempering process. And I'd say I've nothing much to tell you. You just need an eye for it and a furnace. Let's stop talking about tempering. And when you quench, there's nothing special you do? Well, that depends. I heat it up again after that, but not so it starts to glow. I just hold it like this at the edge of the furnace for a while and then quench it again. You quench twice? Yes, although there's less quenching needed the second time, it doesn't get quite so hot. And how does that help? I don't rightly know. I found out about it by chance. I got caught short, needed to piss so bad, I left the rod resting by the furnace by mistake. That's how I found out if you quench twice, it doesn't break as easily. No idea why, but I've tried it enough times to know it works. Can we do something about the price? Well, we can try it. Agree? That's not enough. Aye, for that amount I can be persuaded. So, from the beginning. Good morning. The sun sets out across the Do you know how the blacksmith does his tempering? You'll have to ask him yourself. I help him out here and there, but I could never do his work for him. Well, thank you. My pleasure. My breath is short, my feet are sore. Why is the blacksmith muttering nonsense to himself? Has he been in the sun too long? <laughs> oh, that's nothing. Just a silly little rhyme for his work, to time it right. Oh, I see. Now, I thought he was delirious. No, he's like the that all the time. He hides behind the cloud, his heat goes cold and his fire goes loud. He drowned the fish and broke its neck, threw it down upon the deck. Fry your fish, fish heads best, fishy thighs and fishy breasts. The sun sets out across the skies. He loses his way to the forge he flies. Kuttenberg is far, far away. Kuttenberg is far, here I'll stay. My breath is short, my feet are sore. I'd buy a horse, but I am poor. The sun may burn, the sun may shine, but you will not wither, darling mine. Now, for the last time. The sun he hides behind a cloud, his heat goes cold and his fire goes loud. He drowned the fish and broke its neck, threw it down upon the deck. Fry your fish, the fish heads best, fishy thighs and fishy breasts. Isn't that... What? Shit! Henry! Henry! Here! Henry! I'm glad to see you. Matthew! Fritz! You're alive! Of course we're alive. 
You can't get rid of us that easily. I'm almost surprised how happy I am to see the pair of you are all right. We are now, but we barely made it. Yeah, yeah, it was hard. Fritz ran like a little girl. Really? Bollocks. Bloody joker. <laughs> Tell us what happened to you. They gave me a pretty good thrashing as well. It was only in Rat Eye that I got back in my right mind. And I see you're not doing too badly for yourself. What are you up to? Right now, I'm a squire for Sir Radzig. I see you've worked your way up. Nah. And how are you two getting by? It's shit. You said it. We're still chopped off to bits. Oh, the monastery a bundle. And there's no work here. Not for anyone with more than half a brain, anyway. Well, you two and work never got along. But don't tell me that they're not in need of carpenters. They're reconstructing the monastery. They don't want to fail. And there's nothing else around here. Hey, you wouldn't happen to know of anything. It will really help us out right now. Well, I can ask around, but I'm not promising anything. Thanks, Henry. We'll pay off the debt, don't you worry. And where would they hire you to? Well, we were carpenters in the mines, so wherever they work with wood, I suppose. Forget about construction. After Scarlet's, no one will be building for a long time. Just here in Sassau, and they don't want us here. The best chance we have is to work at a mill. People always have to eat. Ideally, That's we're looking for a job that pays a lot and doesn't require much work. What other neighbours of ours made it? Your hunker's in the monastery. That girl really helped us out. That's about all we know. When we ran for it, we helped Teresa. But who knows where she is now? We got separated. I owe my life to Teresa. She hauled me unconscious to the mill in Ratai and nursed me back to health. I'm glad she survived. Since you know her so well, why not try asking her if she knows about any work? Bye. I'm honored that you should come to me. Are there any problems around here I might be able to help with? Nothing I've heard about. Thank the good Lord. It's quiet here. Good luck to you. I hope I can be of some humble service to you. I hear you like a game of dice. May the Lord go to you. You're a brave soul, taking me on. I'm not used to losing. Hardly worth talking about. How much longer That's it. We'll see. I shouldn't have pushed it. Here's the 
This will be the one. Should I? Shouldn't I? No, I daren't. Not afraid of anything, eh? Ah, come on, it's time I had a throw. Now you. Ah, uh, come on, it's time I had a throw. That's it. Oh no! Hail for me! I was in your shoes. I pass while the going's good. With scores like that, it'll soon be over and done with. This will be the one. That's all. Hey, hey, what are you playing at here? I'm honored that you should come to me. Do you want something? I do. 
And you look like the kind of fellow who knows a thing or two and wouldn't mind a bit of work that's not entirely, well, honest. What's it about? I'm looking for someone who knows how to dip her pockets. For a reward, of course. Well, then it's lucky for you that I happened along. Who do you want me to rob? There's a farmer who lives in the craftsman's yard. He made a killing supplying vegetables to the monastery. I worked for him for a while, but then he threw me out without even paying me for my labour. I'd like you to steal the groschen he owes me. And, also, a pouch containing an amulet he got from the herb woman. He's as superstitious as an old crone, so when he realises he's lost it, he'll have a fit. Sounds easy enough. It ain't quite that easy, otherwise I'd handle it myself. That fucker don't trust no one, and he's always looking over his shoulder. If you manage to nick his pouch and his coin, you can keep the groschen as a reward. May the Lord watch over you. I'm honoured that you should come to me. The Lady of Talmberg sent me. She wants me to find out why the crown's been delayed. Uh, through no fault of ours, I can tell you that. We had a large stone ordered for mounting on the crown, a beautiful Moldavite from South Bohemia that we had cut and polished in Prague. But, well, in short, the good merchant, Martin Wiesek, who was supposed to bring it from Prague, got lost along the way. It's like the ground swallowed him up. Well, Lady Stephanie won't be happy. Uh, look, we've got something else here we can replace the stone with, but I'm sure even you can see it's not worthy of a noble wedding, and definitely not worthy of our fine craftsmanship. Oh, if I only had someone who'd try to find the Moldavite. Uh, why don't you just ask me? Of course I'll try to find the stone. Just tell me where the fellow was seen last. Well, that fellow, as you call him, the esteemed merchant, Martin Wiesek, was last seen riding alongside the Sassal River, passing by the footbridge over the ford, to the west of here. Evidently, he never made it to Sassal town. Hmm. Well, I'll look for him, but he could be far over the mountains by now, or under the ground. God be with you. Good day to you. Do you know where I can find the master engraver? Oh yes. He has a workshop by the monastery. May the Lord watch over you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Here's the farmer's pouch you asked for. Great, thanks. He'll have a fit when he finds out. He won't get a wink of sleep till he gets a new one. You see, he's got this idea he'll be eaten alive by fleas and lice without his amulet. Well, I'm always on the lookout for work. What have you got? When I worked for the farmer, I took a fancy to his maid. Only she's got someone else. A draper. He gives her fine shawls and chemises. And I don't have a chance. Go and steal the shawl she has. What use would her shawl be to you? I'll slip it to someone else and then tell the draper his sweetheart puts no value on the gifts he gives her. He's really jealous, so he'll be mad as hell. That's not very nice of you. But what do I care? What's it worth to you? Don't worry. I'll reward you in Groshen. Good luck to you. Hey! Looking for someone? Wait here for me. Stay. What on earth? God, uh, what hole did you call out of? You've no business here. What was that? Watch out! I brought you that girl's shawl. Thank you. I'll hide it in the farmer's bed and then tell the draper. He'll cripple the bastard if you don't kill him outright. Who is it you want to get revenge on? The farmer or his maid? All of them. They're all a bunch of diabolical swine. And that draper, too. Is there anything else you want? One last thing. But it won't be so easy this time. I got my own back on the farmer and that wench. Now it's the draper's turn for stealing my girl. Steal the tinderbox he carries. It's his pride and joy, and he's always boasting about how fine it is. Everyone knows it's his. Once you've got it, I'll set the whole bloody farm on fire and drop his tinderbox there so everyone will blame him. What reward will I get? I'll give you a pair of boots I just got from the cobbler. You'll never find more comfortable ones in your life. The Avenging Angel is at your service. I'll get right on it. <laughs> 